Hello, my name is Maria and I would like to welcome you to another tutorial video about using Accents together with MATLAB. If you still don't know how to import the data from MVN Studio in MATLAB, please watch the video in our tutorial page. I would like to start by explaining the two scripts that we provide in our developer toolkit. The load MVNX v2 is a MATLAB function that reads all the data from the MVNX file and saves it into a MATLAB structure called tree. Once you run the main script, two graphs will pop up, which I'll talk about them later. For now, I would like to focus on the variables that we obtain. The tree structure is composed of multiple fields. For example, the metadata has all the information about the file, while the segment data has all the information about each segment, such as position, velocity and acceleration. A detailed description about each field can be found in the base article in our base platform. Look for the article MATLAB script to read MVNX files. Here you will find a summary of the information explained in this tutorial video. Going now back to MATLAB, I will explain how to search for a variable in the tree structure. For example, if we would like to get the MVNX version, we need to go to tree metadata MVNX version. And here we see that the MVNX version used was 4. To access the information of each field, we just need to write the field sequentially and separate it with a dot. If we run this section, we see that the MVNX version is saved as a variable. All the variables saved in the script are saved in the same way. Now, let's dive into how to create graphs in MATLAB. In the script provided, we give an example about how to plot the position of the first segment. In the Segment Data tab, we see that the first segment is the pelvis and the position field is composed of three different columns representing X, Y and Z direction. To create a 3D plot of the pelvis position, we need to pick each column individually as a variable of the 3D plot function. The graphs that we provide are very simple, but we can work on them to make more clear to read. We can add labels to the axis, which in our case, the X axis is frames and the Y axis is position. Additionally, we can add a legend for each plot, in this case, X, Y and Z direction. And we can also add the title of the graph. The same procedure can be done to the second graph. Once you click Run, the two graphs will show with the characteristics that we programmed, labels, legend and title. Next, I will exemplify how to create more complex graphs. For example, how to compare ankle, knee and hip angles. First, we create the three different variables that we want to plot. To locate the variables, we go to the tree structure to joint data and we see that the right ankle is joint number 17. Then, we need to write down 3, joint data, 17 and joint angle. We do the same for the other two joints. But now, we need to change the number 17 to the index of the knee and hip joints. In this case, 16 and 15 respectively. To create the figure of these three joints in MATLAB, we write figure first then we create three subplots, one subplot for each joint. In this case, three lines and one column. Then we just write the three joints as a variable of the plot function. As we did before, we can add the title, the labels and the legends. We do the same for each subplot. Each subplot is dedicated to a certain variable that we want to plot. We can copy and paste the script below each subplot, but do remember that we need to change the index of each joint and the labels of the graphs. Once you run the MATLAB script, 
you will have a figure with three different graphs, the ankle, knee and hip angles. Each line in a graph represents an axis of rotation for each joint. It might also be of your interest to know how to plot the graphs in terms of time instead of frames. For that, we need to create a four cycle to pick each entry of the time array. In the tree structure, information about the time of the recording is present in the frames field. To load this information and save it into a variable, we need to separate each field by a dot as we did before. Notice that the time variable is saved as a string. We need to convert it from string to number in order to use it as a variable in our graphs. Running this section of the code, we see that a new variable is saved in a workspace. We can add this variable time into our x-axis by writing it before the joint angle in the plot function. The last thing I will talk in this video is how to compare right and left angles. To avoid writing everything again, we can simply copy and paste the code we wrote for the previous figure. Again, we first create the variables for the left joint angles, the ankle, knee and hip joints. Then, in the tree structure, we look for the index of each joint. Let's assume that we are interested in studying the flexion and extension movement of each joint only. For that, in front of each joint angle variable, we select only the third column. To add the curve for the left ankle angle, we need to write hold on and then create the plot function in terms of time and the variable for the left ankle angle. We should also change the legend to right and left, and we repeat the procedure for the other joints in the other subplots. At the end, we should have three subplots for the three joint angles, each of them with two plots, one for the right and one for the left joint. To have only the flexion and extension angle, make sure to select third column in all variables. After running the section, we get the figure with the comparison between left and right for each joint angle that we defined it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any further questions, go to our tutorial page or our base platform and ultimately contact us by email. Thank you for watching this video.